Breaking news, you are now looking at a live picture of the signing ceremony of the Inflation Reduction Act at the White House. Now, President Joe Biden set to sign the bill momentarily. The $750 billion bill is designed to address some of America's most significant issues like rising health care costs and climate change. Now, among the provisions in the bill, Medicare will now be able to negotiate prices for certain drugs. Let's bring in Rachel Kors, Stat Washington correspondent, to discuss. And Rachel, I know you're a longtime reporter of Washington's drug pricing reform efforts, so we've seen both sides of this. Some people are hailing this as a huge victory. Some politicians are saying it simply does not go far enough. Then, of course, there's the other argument that it could raise drug prices for the rest of us. What's your assessment of the bill and its impact? Well, it certainly is a big step for kind of Washington's drug pricing scene. We haven't seen any policy that would put any sort of price controls on drug makers for decades. And so this certainly is a big development for Washington. But I think there are questions, like you said, about how many you know average Americans will see their drug prices go down because the changes do mostly apply to the Medicare program. So it'll save the federal government money. It'll save taxpayers money. But at the pharmacy counter, it's unclear kind of who's gonna see savings right now. Yeah, Rich, it almost feels like the gun legislation, right? There's not, not what anyone wanted, but certainly finally a long overdue step in the right direction. So let's start with the seniors. How much theoretically will they save and when will it kick in? Right, so for seniors at the pharmacy counter, um, the most imp important provision for them is gonna kick in in 2025. And it means that when seniors go to the pharmacy, they're not gonna be paying any more than $2,000 a year out of pocket for their drug costs. And that's a big deal because there's no cap right now. If they're taking expensive drugs, if they have a disease like cancer, you know that they can just you know keep paying and paying and paying. So I think that's gonna be a very big deal for them. And in 2026, if patients are taking these drugs that Medicare is going to negotiate, then they're actually going to end up paying lower prices because um, what they pay is a percentage of the drug's price. So there could be a potential for significant savings. Rachel, what do we know about the possible drug candidates? I guess, do we know exactly which medications are going to qualify? We don't quite know that yet. And I think we'll have a better idea next fall when the health department announces which 10 drugs it's considering for its first round of negotiations. But Wall Street analysts are um, picking out some drugs from AstraZeneca, GSK, Eli Lilly, and Novo Nordisk as potential um, early candidates because drugs have to have been on the market for um, nine years for small molecule drugs and 13 years for biologic drugs to even be eligible for the negotiation process. And they have to be really expensive and cost the federal government a lot of money. So it's a limited um, number of drugs that are going to be eligible, especially mm -hmm. this first round. But the, those are kind of the companies that analysts are looking at right now. And amazingly, no one, neither side of the political aisle is against lowering prices for seniors. But the theory that Republicans are floating is that this will actually encourage drug makers to raise the prices on the rest of us. Is there anything in this legislation that protects the majority of Americans from seeing increasing prices? There's not. I think the Senate Democrats really wanted to include some policy that would have um, ensured some protections for the private market, but those got struck out because um, they didn't comply with Senate rules because they're using this really arcane budget process to push this legislation through. So I think there's definitely um, some questions about whether cost shifting will happen. Some experts think it will, but other experts think it won't because the idea that drug makers are leaving money on the table right now, like they could be charging more, um, is just an open question um, as to what the market dynamics might be. So it's certainly possible we could see, see some cost, cost shifting, and it will definitely be something to watch in the future. Rachel, like Dave said, this is an issue lowering drug prices that has gained support on both sides of the aisle. Now that we do have this law in this roadmap, I guess, what do you think this tells us about what the future of drug pricing could potentially look like? Well, I think there are certainly some Democrats who would like to see this as just kind of a first step 
and they'd like to expand the program further. Um, a lot of Republicans wouldn't necessarily like that to happen. So a lot depends on what control of Congress is going to look like after the midterm elections. Um, but there are also several issues that this legislation doesn't address, like patent reform and pharmacy benefit managers, which are kind of the middlemen between drug makers and insurers. So there are certainly areas for bipartisan reform and drug pricing advocates are planning to keep pushing even after this legislation is signed. And lastly, what can you tell us about the overall increase in terms of we've seen a study how much drugs are costing, rising at dramatic rates even from a year ago? Right. So I think one important thing to keep in mind is that this legislation doesn't do anything to regulate the launch prices of drugs. So it's very possible that we will see if very expensive drugs come on the market and this legislation won't kick in for you know nine to 13 years. So it's very possible that we'll see some very expensive drugs in the market. Drug spending can certainly go up. This is not uh, the end all be all. But I think there is at least some mechanism at some point for some cost controls on these very expensive medications. Yeah, the median annual price for new U.S. drugs this year, more than $250,000. So it's a small step in the right direction. Rachel, thanks so much. Appreciate you being here.